now our reporter Shubhajit Sengupta from the Supreme Court. We've also got a group of uh, a panel of guests joining us, Karnika Seth, a cyber lawyer. Uh, we've got Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Raj Sabha MP from Bengaluru, one of the petitioners. We've also got Sunil Abraham, Executive Director, Center for Internet and Society. We're going to go over to our guests in just a second. But Shubhajit, just uh, quickly take us through an overview of what the Supreme Court had to say. The Supreme Court was clear in this case that 56A was a violation of freedom of speech. This petition had come in after the Palgat incident where two girls were arrested after Facebook protesting against the bond, uh, strike which was called in when Balasar Thakre di uh, died. After that, it was in 2012, this case went on for two and a half years. Within, during this entire period, a number of other NGOs and the advocates who joined in, they filed their own petition challenging 66A and finally today the court took the view of the fact that this is a law which is in violation with the freedom of speech. The government's view was also taken in. Government during its own argument had said that this was something which was seen to be as a necessary evil and they are not in favor of clamping down of freedom of speech. Today after the verdict was declared, both the government and the opposition has welcomed it. The government has says this is a victory for freedom of speech and they have enough provisions within the IPC itself to take care of anybody who misuses these mediums to take any kind of wrong decisions or, or to propagate messages of hate or anything else and 66A which is seen to be a very arbitrary law is not needed and hence the clamping down of uh, 66A is something which has been welcomed by all sections it seems. Right. Uh, thank you, Shubhajit, for joining us with those details. Let's go over to our panel of guests now. Uh, we've got uh, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Rajiv Sabha MP with us. Mr. Chandrasekhar, um, there was a debate on this issue in Parliament. And if I may quote from something that you said at that time, you described it as something which was prone to gross misuse. When you were laying out your reasoning for the issues which came up with this particular section, you said that uh, there were the, it was vague, there were problems with definition, and of course, you highlighted the issues as far as freedom of speech is concerned today with the Supreme Court decision do you feel that those issues have been addressed no absolutely my uh, you know my petition has uh, did other petitions challenge uh, section 66a in the court on grounds of its constitutionality and the court has upheld that uh, that argument and said that this is not constitutional and, and remember, it is ironical that uh, uh, and somebody like me, a member of parliament who debated this in parliament and raised this many times in parliament, actually had to go to the Supreme Court to get a finding like this, when parliament and the government of the day could have done precisely just what the Supreme Court did, which is that find that this was illegal, this was unconstitutional, and come up with a new set of rules that were more consistent with our liberal democracy. In fact, it's so interesting. So I think this is a great day. It's interesting, yeah, sir, that you say that because, again, I'm, I'm looking at the, the speech that you made in Parliament and one of the things you ask for in that, which is, of course, before you went to the Supreme Court with it, is a, you ask for proactive intervention by the government, which is clearly something that was lacking both by the previous government and by this one. No, absolutely. I, I said that the, these rules ought to be framed through a multi-stakeholder consultation, get people around the table, let this not be designed, designed and architected by bureaucrats sitting in dark, dingy rooms somewhere without being challenged. So this needs to be, look, the IT Act and its rules impact a large number of young and you know, forward-looking Indians. And this needed to be done in the public domain. This law is a law that was passed in Parliament without a debate. The rules were framed without any discussion. And therefore, it comes to this, you know, shameful uh, point where the act has to be found unconstitutional. We are now embarking on digital India. We need a law and rules that are consistent with our democracy and our vision of digital India. So this needs to be done in the public domain. Do you think, sir, that there is space for a version of this kind of law if it was framed correctly? No, I think, look, the, there are legitimate concerns that the government and governments have raised on the issues of misuse of the internet. Now, whether they, so that is, that is legitimate. But to address that legit, uh, the legitimate concern of the government must not allow the government to trespass into the domain of free expression and free speech that the Constitution 19.2 guarantees us. And that is the precise nature of this debate. And that can be done if the government is comfortable about a multi-stakeholder consultation, brings people uh, around the table like those who you have right. on your uh, channel today, and have them 
architect right. indeed the uh, set of rules that works for the government works for free speech and works for a safe internet Right. Uh, we will come back uh, to this discussion in just a second, bring in our other panelists as well. But let's quickly take you through some of the political reactions which have been coming in to the Supreme Court judgment. I am awaiting the judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. And I will come with a structured response after going to the judgment, which I am told runs into 200 pages. We respect freedom of speech and expression. We are not in favor of curtailing communication of honest dissent, opinion, disapproval or criticism on social media. Ironically, even your government had opposed the striking down of Section 66 of the IT Act. But what are your first reactions really coming in from the Supreme Court verdict? Well, uh, the Supreme Court has done the right and appropriate thing by, talk, uh, by striking down Section 66A. Uh, it had become an instrument of oppression. So therefore, if you want to go against people who, well, let's say, constitute what is called the bulk of the dark net or are the hidden people, then you have to aspire to ensure that globally acceptable rules of engagement emerge. Uh, Knee-jerk uh, law enforcement, as 66A entailed, is not the solution. It's a very progressive step and this kind of a moral policing and they will decide what we write, we decide how we think, how we move, how we you know, put our comments. I think it's a very, very good judgment and it, is, it will send down a very good message also. Internationally we were shamed, we can at least set up, at least our judiciary protects our right. Social media ka misuse bhot ho raha hai hamare desh mein. Uske rokne ke liye. कुछ ना कुछ पुलिस के हाथ में कानून का एक सेक्शन तो चाहिए कल सुप्रीम कोर्ट के खिलाफ कुछ फेसबुक पे डाल दिया तो क्या सुप्रीम कोर्ट कार्रवाई नहीं करेगी Over the past few years, social networking sites and blocking sites have uh, emerged as a tool to give voice to our political resentment. And uh, the state has been uh, arbitrarily cracking down on those activists and bloggers. Uh, online is the only medium by which we express our anger. So it should be respected. And the stuff which we post here, it's only about human rights violation. We didn't uh, say we express our anger through this medium. How important is this decision as a creative person? No, it, it's... it's very imperative for us because at the end of the day when we actually we want to reach out to a lot of people and social media is a fantastic platform for us too but we have to keep in mind the sentiments of the people most of the time because if we put up something that is a bit offensive with respect to politics or religion we're just doing it because it's our point of view it's not trying we're not trying to hurt anyone's sentiment with respect to anything it's our point of view we feel this is what it is and we make a quick joke about it but uh, from the recent past what we've learned is People have got death threats with respect to putting up stuff on social media and I think this judgment is a fantastic landmark for creative people, especially people in the comedy field. Let's go back to our panelists now and uh, really get a legal perspective on what this means. We've got uh, Karnika Seth, uh, a specialist in cyber law, also with us. Karnika, if we take a look at what the Supreme Court has said today, basically what it came down to was whether this section contravened freedom to expression or not. And the Supreme Court decided clearly it did and therefore it was unconstitutional. Correct. Uh, I, in my view also, uh, when you look at the section, the, the, the terms were itself so ambiguous. Um, terms like inconvenience or annoyance, you cannot some criminalize somebody and say, you know, an act uh, of annoyance could lead to, say, a three year of uh, imprisonment term, unless the gravity is there. I mean, you have to define the scope and determine the degree of a particular act to say that this, in, this act can be criminalized. Therefore, uh, the ambiguity had to be, uh, you know, just struck down and the whole section uh, is quite vague. And that's the reason that I think that today's verdict, I completely agree with the stand and uh, the, the decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely when it curbs uh, freedom of speech on the net is something that uh, nobody would, uh, you know, look up and say that this is correct. Right. So uh, in order to grow, in order to let the free speech prevail, this, this was essential. So I think this is completely uh, agreeable. Right, let's go over to yeah. Sunil Abraham as well. Uh, Sunil, what this does when is really consider, bring uh, up... Right, sorry, do continue. Let's uh, go I over to... I was saying that when you yes. see IPC, yes. uh, you know, you, you have various sections. Mm -hmm. 
you have various sections of the you know IPC where you have murder and other sections which uh, clearly say what what amounts to murder what what are the illustrations which will be there you know and the, in this particular section if you see section 66 a you would not find any examples or any illustrations to define the scope of these words therefore right. this uh, I, I would say that this was unconstitutional right so now let's uh, really take that question over to Sunil Abraham Sunil uh, what, what this also does is really highlight once again an ongoing debate which is that until you can define the internet you can't define laws for it Sunil, if you can hear me. Sunil, can you hear me? Sorry, sorry are you asking me the question? Yes. Yes. Yes, I, yes, I can. Could okay. you repeat the question, please? What we were asking was that what this does is bring up the debate that all of you have been having for a very long time, which is that until you define the limits of the internet, you can't define laws for it. Uh, here, I'd uh, like to disagree uh, perhaps a wee bit with uh, both my panelists on this uh, important day. Uh, what the MP has told us is that what we need is a multi-stakeholder process. What he is advocating for is a process fix. Uh, he says that as long as we have the process right, uh, we will end up with good uh, constitutional law. And my other panelist is making the argument, uh, just like you are doing so in the question, uh, that we need to define these exceptions, these additional exceptions that have been added in 66A. And you're adding on to that question by saying, perhaps we have to define the internet as well. Uh, I, I disagree with uh, both these uh, perspectives broadly, because I believe in the principle of equivalence. Uh, we don't need too many new laws to govern cyberspace or to govern the internet. Acts that are criminal offline are also criminal online. We don't need specific provisions or sections in the IT Act for every single offline crime to make them a crime also online. So therefore, there is a small set of uh, uh, speech offenses such as spam, etc., mm -hmm. that can be specifically criminalized in the IT Act, uh, but we don't need any additional limits to free speech. Right. And this is exactly what the Supreme Court has said today, both in 666A, which it struck down in entirety, right. and when it came to 79, uh, the court says only those restrictions that are available in the Constitution shall apply, no additional restrictions shall apply. Right. Uh, we will, of course, continue with this discussion with our panel. We've got Karnika Seth, Rajiv Chandrasekhar and Sunil Abraham with us. But we're going to have slip into a quick break first. We will be right back. Welcome back. The main stakeholders as far as Section 66A are concerned are those who use the internet. Uh, what is Twitter saying about this? Let's go over to Ananya to find out. By the way, thanks very much. Uh, our hashtag on IBN Live for Section 66A is hashtag Sex66A and that's trending at number three position on Twitter India at the moment as you can uh, see from this uh, screen over here. Uh, this is the big talking point right now across Twitter that is after uh, cricket of course. And the first tweet uh, this afternoon is from Rajiv Chandrasekhar. He's the member of parliament from Rajya Sabha who filed a petition in this case and he says it's a journey that began in 2013. It now comes to a close and feeling happy and fulfilled. Congrats to all petitioners and Indians free speech wins. Of course it's not just uh, the high profile personalities who are tweeting. There's Gaurav Agarwal at Jeed underscore Knox who says oh the joy of being free be who you are and say what you want those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind I think it sums it up uh, pretty well the hashtag section 66a uh, we have a tweet uh, from Arun Nambiar who says 
बीजेपी कांग्रेस ए पी और एनी वन सेक्शन सिक्सटी सिक्स ए बींग थ्रोन इज अ वार्निंग टू ऑल पोलिटिकल पार्टीज फ्रॉम द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज आर वेपन अगेंस्ट यू दैट्स हाउ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज नाउ एम्पार्ड द कॉमन मैन इन इंडिया दिस अ ट्वीट ऑल्सो फ्रॉम फिल्म मेकर ऑन एयर हू सेज ही फील्स एम्पार्ड एज अ सिटीजन ऑफ अ डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्री विद सेक्शन सिक्सटी सिक्स ए बींग स्क्रैप बट इट्स टाइम नाउ फॉर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ही पॉइंट्स आउट टू स्क्रैप आई पी सी थ्री सेवेंटी सेवन दैट डिनाइज फ्रीडम टू लव पॉइंटिंग द सुप्रीम कोर्ट्स attention to this direction there's a uh, mayank bariar who's uh, tweeted that the supreme court has struck down the entire section 66a the faith in justice has been restored laws like these breed tyranny that was a predominant sentiment on twitter remember especially after november 2012 when that palghar incident uh, took place which is in fact formed the basis of the petition today uh, that on the basis of which the judgment has been delivered shweta i think sums up what you and i and most uh, twitter users feel today a uh, few so we thought we won't be behind the bars for posting of tweeting anytime soon cheers to that one uh, there's also a note of caution though that's coming in from v shakti who says remember section 66a going out doesn't make abusive trolling legal just for your information and and another user is echoing that sentiment and his name is anubhav triwari who says trolls have got wings remember there has to be a line that is drawn and the supreme court has pointed in that direction when it has said there must be a distinction between discussion uh, advocacy and what amounts to simple incitement uh, there's a question that's being raised by shreya who says can someone explain to me where does aib roast form a uh, 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 figure in the scheme of things now and that was that controversy that broke out about the freedom of speech and that show that had to be taken offline from youtube because of that row over whether it had uh, 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 breached its limits but let's sign off with this tweet from binayak acharya and uh, i think this photo says as to all can i write something on azam khan's buffalo now that section 66a has been abolished is the question he's uh, asking kajori i think he's got the answer today from the supreme court won't you say Thank you so much Ananya for joining us with an overview of what Twitter is saying as always a little sarcastic a little funny and you can't be arrested for it so we've got um, another reaction which is coming in now a man who was arrested in Puducherry for offensive tweets against Karthi Chidambaram uh, now uh, his father congress leader P Chidambaram has reacted on the judgment he said and I quote welcome the judgment the section was poorly drafted and was vulnerable it was capable of being misused and it was misused if some provisions of the law have to be strengthened that could be considered but section 66a was not the answer let's go back now to a panel of guests we've got karnika set uh, a lawyer specialist in cyber law and we've got sunil abram executive director center for internet and society with us sunil i'm going to go back to you and pick up where the conversation dropped off which was uh, whether there are needs to define the internet or not when uh, legislating uh, specifically for the internet whether there's a need to legislate specifically for the internet the larger discourse uh, surrounding this particular section and of course the supreme court decision on it some of the questions which have been raised and which were raised in uh, in the petitions which had been put in as far as uh, the supreme court is concerned is what constitutes public and private space as far as the internet is concerned don't you think that's at least something that needs to be addressed is a question addressed to me Okay uh we'll we'll get back to Sunil in just a sec Karnika yes uh, what what you know let me put the same question to you what would your take be on it Uh well I think internet is uh, a borderless space and uh, it needs a treatment of its own kind we cannot uh, you know use the general law which uh, we use for every uh, act uh, to call it an offense uh, would e equally apply in all in all cases uh, to internet or in the same degree because you see defamation online uh, will have a far greater impact so if it is really defamation then what we have in the ipc and what we have in the it act should differ in terms of stringent uh, punishments uh, well you have to basically see the degree it will vary on the internet at the same time what you are expressing as an opinion uh, or what you are saying in a consumer forum maybe a blog uh to uh Kanika, say about let a me, service let me just, provider or let me ask you services, let me ask uh, you to elaborate it's justified Let me ask you to elaborate in on that statement as well. If you're talking, and it's come up, but as far is, as Section 66A is concerned, what I mean is, uh, yeah. you know, is the fact that whether reblogs, retweets, sharing, as far as whether those are also factors. 
Well, if if you if uh, if there is something which is, uh, for example, in terms of obscenity, we say that if something is obscene, then publishing something as well as sending or transmitting is also uh, by, by somebody knowingly is also uh, equally criminal uh, act. Right. And in the same way, if you say that uh, you know, uh, if if something is illegally uh, illegal, something is objectionable in the real sense of the word objectionable, then uh, if somebody knowingly or willfully uh, does the same act will amount to uh, right. a criminal act. Uh, however, the scope has to be defined, the, the right. gravity of the offence has, has to be very clear before mm -hmm. you really impute that kind of criminality on an act. Right. So that's what I mean. Okay. Uh, in, okay. in, in the sense that if you're walking on the road, you cannot just walk with a stick and sure. you know expect that you have the freedom. At the same time, you hit somebody. So you yeah. have to have a boundary right. where you uh, say I'm that yes, this is legal Kalika, and this I'm is sorry, illegal. I'm sorry, we are out of time. You can time. express your view, I but you cannot you. Uh, abuse. We are out someone. of time. Uh, but thank you, Karnika and Sunil, for joining us as a part of this discussion. What uh, say, what uh, really the the Supreme Court has done today is remove one draconian law, but the larger debate over what is and what is not all right on the internet.